Today's video is about kits. We design them, we cut them, we do the chemical welding, we do the color dye on the acrylic, we see and see it off and put your logos on there. We get to do all the tough stuff. Then two things happen. You either put them all together 100% yourself or we pre-wire them and ship them to you ready to go. Good morning. My name is Joe Cashwell with Rotocraft RC. We've been shipping a tremendous amount of charge cases as kits. A kit is when you get the parts, the deck is all CNC'd, we have the chemical welding of the brackets on, the plate comes with it, and then we have two ways of doing the kit. One is with all the parts in a bag, um, and there will be no labor by us, um, or sometimes we have customers that have us go ahead and do all the pre-wiring to where all they have to do is mount their charger, plug it in, mount their power supply, plug it in, and they're ready to go because we've done all our wiring and routing ahead of time. Now with a lot of our kits being domestic and international, this is actually an international kit. It's going to Bremen. Um, what we want to do is we want to do a quick video so customers understand how to assemble. pull the two shipping screws out of the mounting plate. This actually has quarter 20 screws that come with the kit that mount to the bottom of the charger. This is a 308 Duo. Then you would plug the cables in to go to the balance and to the banana jacks into the front of the charger. Now we supply a 12 gauge wire and banana jacks. You're gonna have to solder the banana jacks on at a 90 degree angle so you can get between the storage and the charger. Now if there's not storage and it's just a logo sitting here, then you don't have to do the 90 degree angle. Then you can go ahead and use the cables that come with your charger to go down to the banana jacks. So with this case, the customer's got the mooch plugs. So after you have the charger mounted with the pigtail hanging out that goes to the EC5, you'll put on the corresponding EC5 and go over here to your ring terminals and solder those on and heat shrink them and you'll actually make a connection here. Joint right here which has double locking nuts on it on the banana jack, you'll go down to the pigtail down to your power supply. And what that gives you is a good connection joint right here. This is a good termination for both coming in. And when you plug power into this, you can run your charger via 12 to 24 volts DC. Or if you plug in your power supply, you can use this as a mooch plug to run other chargers. Then you're gonna run your LEDs around any logos that you have. Now we'll do the chemical welding for you so the logo is installed and sometimes we'll actually put the vinyl on and trim it for you because if you try to do it with the logo installed you can actually scratch the acrylic now I'll go ahead and hold this up in front of some LEDs so you can see how it looks this is actually a new process that Chris just came up with for logos and he's been dying for one with big block lettering that he could use and this Team Fataba logo just was begging to be done and then he added the red to the team, and that color dye looks fantastic. For the customer that's getting a, a bare kit, that's where they do all the work and insert everything themselves. All we're going to do for you is just the chemical welding on the storage and the chemical welding of the brackets for the charger and the charger mount. So all that stuff will be done for you, all the CNC work, everything else you're going to do. So if you're actually doing the carbon vinyl overlay on it, what you're gonna do is I take a bath towel and I'll lay it down on a flat table. Then I'll take the vinyl, I'll lay it face down, peel the backer off of it, and then I'll take the deck and lay on top of it. Now, once you have the deck laying flat on it, just press down on the deck for a second and then flip it back over. And you'll see where everything is on the deck. Now, one of the things that we need you to do is if you're gonna take a credit card or a driver's license to squeegee it out, take some soft cloth and wrap it to where it's nice and folded around the edge. Um, you can also take the soft side of Velcro and just fold it right around. And then take this backer, your deck's gonna be facing up. You're gonna take the backer that you peeled off and you're gonna lay on it. And then you can squeegee it out and that keeps from marring up the vinyl. It, you can really booger up the vinyl. And then when you flip it back over, if you see a bubble, don't try and push the bubble down. Try to chase the bubble to an opening. 
And if you have to, you can pop that vinyl and, and peel it back up and try and get it back on. So if you don't get it, perfect. Now, we do have an application kit that you can order from us. It's on rotocraftrc.com. It's got a vinyl primer. It's got the vinyl adhesive fluid or the application fluid, and it's got denatured alcohol. So if you have any uh, perspiration or sweat or anything, as it's like we get in the shop on this deck, you'll want to clean it off with the denatured alcohol, get it to dry off, and then you can put the application fluid on. Then you just throw the vinyl on and you just run it around, and then you'll leave it for a while till that fluid dries from underneath. The bottom of this vinyl has actually got little channels in it. When you look at some of the stuff, when you cut it off, you'll see it's actually the, all those little channels and lines that you see is for getting that application fluid and air out from underneath this vinyl. So once you have the vinyl on, you'll just take an X-Acto knife and you'll just go through and you'll trim it. And you'll go around every opening and trim it. And then the best thing that I like to do is I like to look from the back side and you can see if you still have a little bit hanging in there and then you can come back in and clean up that hole a little bit more. Now it's a lot of labor it'll probably take you about an hour, hour and a half to trim one of these to do it well. Do not get in a rush. The other thing I do is I have a sashimi knife for cutting sushi and, and fish and I actually take it's a 1000 slash 4000 grit uh, stone, I'll take the 4000 and I will actually groom my blade before I start trimming vinyl. And a good sharp blade makes it a thousand times faster. So in your kit, you're going to get a package like this. This has got the clear fan grills in it if you're running the, the programmable uh, fans. This also has the IEC, the screws, the hardware and everything in here. And this is just a good convenient shipping package so we don't damage the deck. The second package you'll have inside is this. This will have your vinyl in it. So we don't want the vinyl getting damaged in shipping, so we go ahead and put it inside of a tube to protect it. Then you'll get your fans with your software and your program cables. This will be your wiring kit. This has the heat shrink and the ring terminals and wire, uh, pretty much everything that it takes to wire the case. And if you have a storage door, you're going to have your hinge and your door all in here. And then you'll have your touch latch um, in your package also, and that mounts to the front of the deck. Now remember, when you're looking at your door, the face of the door has a beveled edge to it. The back side is cut. That way, when the door swings shut, the beveled edge drops into the case, so it does not jam into the case as it's opening up. So remember, the beveled edge goes front and down, and the hinge goes on the back. And there'll be hinge screws and everything all inside the bag to where you can install everything. So on our storage door, you see the hinge, and how the hinge goes in is there's the hinge screws that we will ship with it. So what you gotta do is you gotta line that hinge up. It needs to be a half inch down and a half inch down. So you'll come into your case a half an inch, which is the thickness of the PVC deck. Now, if we're doing a heavy duty deck, it's only three eighths, so you have to make some marks. But you'll see how thick that deck is, and that's a half inch down, and you will line this up with the bottom of that deck, and you'll poke little bitty holes. I have a little bitty fine screwdriver that I ground to a point, and you'll set them holes in the middle. Now, if you have what's called a VIX bit, what a VIX bit is, is it's for people that hang doors and stuff like that and do a lot of hinges. A VIX bit will line up right there and then it will push in and leave a dimple dead center of that hole. I'll do one, get one screw in, then I'll line up the other end, do it, get that screw in, then I'll work across. Now the latch for the touch latch, that mounts inside the case. If you notice on all of our kits, we make the bottom of the, the opening removable. And the reason why we want that to be removable is because it's a lot easier to put this in if that isn't in your way. So what you're gonna do is you will have the deck upside down. You'll pull that plate off the bottom of this, that plate right there. 
you'll, you'll take out the screws that's holding that on, you'll take that out, and then you can get your door to where it's flush, and you'll put the latch in upside down, you'll put your four screws in, and then this will still be in this connector right here, then what we do is on this pole, this is supposed to be like this because especially on this case, it's coming in at such a, such a steep angle. Um, I'll actually take a little piece of double-sided sticky tape and stick it on this pole and I'll put it in the claws and I'll shut it. And then once you push down on that, now this pole is stuck to the door. Then this actually has a little notch out on it. You can slide this on, put it down, and screw that in place. Once you have your screws on, take it all back apart and get that piece of double-sided sticky tape out of there. Because the reason why this is wiggle, this wiggles is loose like this, is when it goes in, it needs to be able to move. And if you do that, it'll work perfect every time. Now here's another case that I want to show you. Now this one, this is where customers talk to us about putting a touch latch in some cases and we say it can't happen. Uh, then we'll put little brackets for the lid to lay across. We have a lot of depth. I think it's two and five eighths is the depth that we need minimum on the inside just for the mechanism itself. Now this case, we actually just CNC'd or actually I think I just drummed the acrylic around that. But this is what grabs that ball and closes. So when you get this put in, you'll put these screws in place and hold this once you figure out your depth. You'll take that ball and you'll push it down in there and lock it. And when the ball's in there, it will lock. And then you have your ball that's in there with a little flat spot with the 3M tape. And then you'll go ahead and shut the lid and it will stick to it. Then you press it, it'll jump back up and then you can put the bracket on to hold the ball. But remember, when you do the door, you need to remove that double-sided sticky tape. If you don't, you'll find out really fast. It, it, it will work one out of three times, and once that tape lets that ball move a little bit and it's stiff, you'll start hitting here, you'll start hitting there. All of this is made for that ball to touch there. This flat spot right here will line up the bottom of that ball automatically. Now this is Jason Bell's case. He wanted us to do all the wiring and all the assembly, put the vinyl on and everything like that. Um, as you can see on the storage, the touch latch is already in. We have illuminated logo in the deck of the lid. If you see, here's the bevel to the front of it so it doesn't bind up when it latches. Stainless steel hinges on, fans, vinyl, grills, everything. And then on the back side of it, all the wiring is completely done. Now there is a fee for this because this is a tremendous amount of labor. It takes us about a day to wire this up and get it all assembled. So some people want to do it themselves and some people want us to do it. Now what Jason will do is he'll run these down to the power supply and you see where they're terminated on the back sides of the banana jack. And then this pigtail is ready for when he puts the charger and the mounting plate in here, his charger will plug right in. The finished there. look is going to be just like this and that will glue down or that will stick down with the 3M tape that we have in there. Now remember, we make this to a tolerance of the ones that we have. Sometimes these boards come wider. They're, they're, it's not high quality machining for aerospace industry or anything like that. It's just a balance board. So if your balance board doesn't fit in there, take a sanding block or a file and just straighten up that side a little bit. Now we actually mock this up when we're building it, we mock it up with a charger. So all the screws are already pre-drilled to where on our other kits, we just have two transport ones. And after you get your charger in, you would use fresh meat and then you would go ahead and put your other screws back in. The LEDs are already on the switch. And then we go into a pair of step-down converters. The first step-down converter runs the fans. The second step-down converter runs the LEDs. What Jason doesn't know is know that we added some LEDs to the outside of the balance connectors. Now on some of our videos, we have setting the step-down converters. So this is a step-down converter. 12 or 24 volts from the power supply will go into it and then you'll set your meter on the other side and turn a potentiometer to those 12 volts coming out. And then you will feed your fans with the 12 volts 
And then if there's going to be LEDs in your case, you'll have a second step down converter. So you'll do the same thing. You'll set it to 12 volts and you will hook up your LEDs to the second one. Now coming out of the second LED step down converter, you will need to switch your power. And so you'll see a bracket here holding LEDs, LEDs here. So there's a tremendous amount of termination point right here on this poor little um, converter. But we've got all the wire run and, and ready to go for them. All we're waiting for is the brand new Meanwell 1600 to be delivered here in a couple days. And then this kit will be ready to ship to him. The only thing that he's going to have to do when he gets this done is he'll hook this up to the power supply to get power to the step down converters and then there'll, there's a pigtail on the upper deck that he'll terminate to the switch and then he can turn the lights on the upper deck on and off as well as turning on and off the lights on this. Now the fans, you use the Allen wrenches with the, your Allen hex drive with the supplied screws. You'll go through the grill, go through the fans and then you put the locking nuts on the back. The servo test ports. So I've already got his cables run. The hole's already in the side of the bracket. So once he mounts his charger, he can take some uh, long pliers or something like that and get them plugged into the side of the charger. The uh, USB that comes in here and you're gonna wanna run that through the step down converter because you're only gonna wanna put 12 volts to that. And that's pretty much how these things go together. Now this is Jason's upper deck. And once we get it all into the case, we'll have a hole drilled through here that these, this pigtail will come through. We'll put some uh, braided uh, protectant on that wire so when it opens and shuts, it's not chafing the wires. But this is all silicone wire. We use nothing but silicone wire in our cases now. And then you'll see all the LEDs on the back of this. So once this goes inside the case, he'll go over and he'll just solder these ends to the two pigtails that are on the inside that go to this. And then that way this turns on and off with the logo in his deck with the switch. So that's the difference between the two kits and we hope this helps you out. I hope this video helps you a lot. It, it, it's we really really appreciate our customers of course we love our customers whether you're doing just a kit or we're building the entire case for you we love everything that we get to do with you please subscribe to our YouTube page we always put up new videos and we want everybody to have as much knowledge as we have hopefully more because sometimes we get to be stupid <laughs> anyways we hope you all have a great day subscribe to our YouTube page we have an Instagram page under Rotorcraft. Just please, we want to help you guys as much as you guys help us. Thanks a lot and have a great day. That might be easier for ourselves. When the kit comes in, it'll just have the framework for the storage and for the charger in it. That's all the chemical welding. We don't want a custom be to... Assembling it yourself, then we'll send you a roll of vinyl. It comes in the tube that we showed you. All you're gonna do is you'll peel the vinyl off. The way Now we... this is actually into the charger cable and then we, um, do the um to go down to the banana jacks routing ahead of time also your banana jacks your cables will come out of your banana uh, balance board and that we have in there now remember we make these they're tight we make this to a tolerance of the ones that we have Sometimes these boards come wider. They're, they're, it's not high quality machining for aerospace industry or anything like that.